Hi everybody, welcome to a new episode of Bass Habits. Today we're gonna talk about U2 and their bass player, Adam Clayton. U2 have released 14 studio albums and are one of the world's best-selling music artists, having sold an estimated 170 million records worldwide. They also won 22 Grammy Awards, more than any other band, and were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2005, their first year of eligibility. Initially rooted in post-punk, U2's musical style has evolved through alternative rock, electronic dance music and pop. The rhythm section is pretty straightforward. Bass player Adam Clayton doesn't play complicated parts and doesn't have a standout sound, yet the bass is a defining element in the songwriting of U2. Why? First of all, the bass guitar is always mixed very loud. Despite the simplicity of its parts, Clayton's bass is always at the forefront of the mix, especially during the 90s, where he's often presenting the full bottom sound of a dub bassist, covering the most sonic space with the smallest number of notes. Second, the guitar often plays arpeggios and atmospheric parts that rely on effects instead of actual riffs leaving a lot of space for the bass to carry the groove. On top, the guitar is often a more rhythmic role than a melodic one. In many occasions, the edge acts almost like a percussive instrument, especially during verses. In regard, The Edge stated that he developed his unique playing style partially as a result of him and drummer Larry Mullen trying to accommodate the eccentric bass playing of Clayton by being the timekeepers of the band. In Clayton's words, Larry's drums have always told me what to play and then the chords tell me where to go. So let's have a look at the main points of the bass style of Adam Clayton. Number 1. Good old pumping 8th notes in the band's early years, Clayton had no formal musical training and he generally played simple bass parts in 4-4 time signature, consisting of steady eighth notes emphasizing the root of the chords. This type of driving bass line is featured on many of u 2 most iconic songs, such as With or Without You. See the stone set in your eyes, see the thorn twist. Number 2. Harmonic Syncopation Clayton's style is noted for what his bass instructor Patrick Pfeiffer called harmonic syncopation. In his words, Adam plays a consistent rhythm that stresses the eighth note of each bar, but he anticipates the harmony by shifting the tonality before the guitar chords do. This gives the music a feeling of forward motion. Do you feel loved provides a good example of this. The guitar sits on the straight drum beat and changes chord every 4 bars, while the bass anticipates the change in chord, hitting on the minor third. Number 3. Play the same 4 bars through all the song. Yep, like The Cure and Joy Division, also U2 rely heavily on mid tempos and repetition to write their songs. If you look at With or Without You, one of their biggest hits, the bass guitar repeats the same 4 bars with the same intensity beginning to end. In other cases, like on Mysterious Ways, it's just one bar looping all the time. The bass isn't in all the time, but when it's in, it sticks to the same three notes, for the duration of the whole song. So once again, repetition plays an important role in the music of U2 and pushes the listener to identify the song with the bass lines. Number 4. Rhythmic Syncopation Clayton's idea of syncopation is very clever and adds a lot of movement to the music of U2 in a very subtle way. On Bullet in the Blue Sky, it's the eighth note on the high octave of the beat that drives the rhythm. On Red Flag Day, the one note of the kick gives the trademark stumbling groove to the verse. The blackout is also pretty cool with the bass line way off the 4 on the floor drum pattern provided. The 
bass doesn't almost hit on the kick, providing a syncopated line with a distinct funky vibe. Miami is also very interesting, with the bass guitar hitting on the upbeat while the drums keep the rhythm grounded. Number 5, it's all about that pentatonic scale. Speaking of pentatonic, the majority of Clayton's bass lines are composed using minor pentatonic scales. In fact, pretty much every U2 bass line is made with a pentatonic scale. On Volcano, a driving dirty pentatonic figure holds up the song while the guitar has a more rhythmic role in the verse. So what she used to be. I'm so glad the past On Magnificent, Adam Clayton steps out of the ranks and creates the hook line responding to the lead vocals. The minor pentatonic scale has a key role in defining the sound of U2. The feeling of vastness that permeates their music is not just the result of the use of guitar effects such as chorus and delay, but it's also due to their minimalist melodic approach. Guitar player The Edge favors the perfect fifth interval and often plays chords consisting of just two notes, the fifth and the root, without being too explicit about minor or major keys, creating a musical ambiguity. In the same way, the minor pentatonic scale implies a minor mood, yeah, but it's never evident. It's like if the bass is incapable of suffering or feeling pain. The combination of these two factors and the repetitive nature of U2's bass lines contributes to the epic and impassable vibe that comes along in songs like A Man and a Woman. Clayton incorporated influence from Motown and reggae into his playing style, and as he became a better timekeeper, his playing became also more melodic. As we know, every bass player has a favorite note. Clayton has a passion for the ninth. The Ocean's bass line uses three ninth arpeggios plus a few harmonics to put together its beautiful melody. Adam Clayton and Larry Mullen are often overlooked when talking U2. Everybody tends to identify the band with bonus vocals and evocative lyrics and with the sparse voicing of the Edge's guitar. But the truth is that the relatively simple U2's rhythm section provides the ideal beat for their magnificent musical tapestry, a solid canvas on which all the melody can shine out. If either of those two guys played fancy stuff, it just wouldn't have the grandeur of U2. And this is all I had to say about Adam Clayton, please let me know in the comments which bass player would you like me to review next, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram.